Hey guys, welcome on today's live stream. Uh, today I would like to show you an uh, open source Firebase alternative, which is called Supabase. Uh, first of all, of course, let you let me know if you can hear me, if you can see me. Uh, today I'm experimenting with streaming both uh, to YouTube and Twitch in the same moment. Uh, I never uh, streamed anything to Twitch, so today it's... Uh, a bit experimenting uh, time. Um, maybe I will decide to uh, stream more on that uh, platform. Um, but yeah, plan for today is uh, just to show you um, the super base and describe you uh, what kind of features this platform actually has. And I will also show you how you can use um, that uh, super base thing uh, with your Next.js uh, application. Uh, so of course, if you have any questions to what you see on, uh, on the screen, uh, feel free to use chat. Uh, I will try to answer your questions uh, if you have any. Uh, so first of all, uh, maybe a quick um, description of what the Superbase is. Um, Superbase uh, gives us um, three really important things, um, the database, the authentication module, and the storage. And the database um, basically works in the way that Superbase uh, is responsible for managing um, the servers, the database for us. And we are getting a nice UI and nice library that we can use for actually um, storing the data inside the database. Uh, but of course, database is not enough um, because usually we have to store some data, but we also have to um, have some authentication and authorization layer and the superbase also offers that in the minute i will show you how this works in practice how you can uh, create new users what kind of apis the superbase gives us but it's really a neat solution to actually have the database and uh, mix it with the authentication from the superbase because we can have uh, some data marked as completely public uh, for instance products in the e-commerce store uh, but we can uh, also make some of the data from the database uh, private and use the authentication layer just to be sure that certain data can be accessed only for uh, logged in users. Uh, the third thing which is uh, really cool about um, Superbase and I will also show it to you in the minute is a storage. So basically we have uh, the concept of buckets to which we can upload uh, files. And of course, uh, the storage and the authentication layer also works um, in very seamless way, I would say. So we can authenticate the users uh, and make sure that they can upload um, the files and then manage and delete only own files. So we don't have situation that anybody uh, can and mess around with the data. And there's the last thing, uh, which is currently, uh, I think, in alpha uh, tests. Um, it's, it's not yet production ready, uh, but uh, also Superbase is working on functions. So we're going to have the functions. Uh, the function is basically uh, the custom code that we can deploy on the Superbase server. And of course, we're going to have possibility to mix that with database authentication and storage. So we can just put piece of the code, um, some small backend like um, check whether somebody uploaded the file into the storage. And if the file is uploaded, uh, then do certain thing like uh, create the thumbnail or send email to some people about uh, upload to the storage. So, so you can um, do this uh, in, in many ways. Uh, but it's not yet uh, released, so I will not cover this uh, in, in this today uh, live stream. Um, and what is great about Superbase is that you can try it for free. So you can just log in um, to the Superbase with your GitHub account and um, you have um, the, the test version, the free version. Of course, the test version is not, you, you, you cannot host there something like Facebook or very popular uh, application, but it's, I think, enough for some experiments, for some side projects, I think it's enough, right? You have up to 500 megabytes in the database. And by the way, uh, the database inside um, 
uh, the Superbase is just an Postgres, right? So if we go, for instance, to the settings and if we go um, to our database, then you basically see that you have the um, host and you can connect to the um, database behind uh, this system. So it's super, super flexible because you don't have uh, the concept of vendor locking uh, like on other platforms like on firebase because firebase of course gives you sdk it gives you apis but the database is on their side and here in superbase it's just an postgres database so you can connect to it outside the superbase you can do the backup you can mess around with the data uh, and uh, this this works uh, in, in in a very easy uh, way so let's maybe start with um the table the table and I, I will try to explain you how um how the tables are working so uh here you can see that we have some ui in, in, in which for instance we have um the ebook right so so here we have um the table called ebook and here we can um submit information about some ebooks that we have in our database so basically we have here the user interface uh and here we can for instance super base uh, uh, ebook, right? Uh, the ID is automatically generated. Uh, then we have some timestamps. And if we click, uh, click save, uh, then we have the new record in, the, in our database, right? And this is the user interface. Here we can uh, create new data. Of course, there's no problem with editing the table. So for instance, if we want to extend um, this table and add some, some new attribute, uh, there's no problem with that. Right? We can specify integers, booleans, JSONs. Uh, there's no problem. It's a regular um, database. Um, right now, I will, will not add anything uh, to it. Uh, let's let's keep it simple. Um, however, uh, what is really great that we have the table ready, right? And now let's say we have the next JS application or React application or whatever. Usually you want to fetch the data and display it in, in, in some context. So um, the, the, the Superbase, of course, lets you do that uh, in in very uh, simple manner. Uh, of course, I will show it to you. Um, in case you have any questions about how Superbase works, um, how the database works, how, how the authentication and other things are working, feel free to ask on the uh, chat. Uh, right now, the chat is empty, so probably uh, people have some better stuff <laughs> to do over the Saturday uh, than listen about the Superbase. Um, however, if, if you are just listening and you have some questions, feel free uh, to pose them. Even if you see later the recording of, of that live coding session you can always use uh, the comment section and just ask there some questions and whenever i will have time i will try to get back to it so okay we have um, the database uh, i will show you in the minute how you can use it from your next js code but quickly i will just describe the other components uh, because here obviously you can just create new tables um, you can um, specify some policies we'll get to it uh, because I don't want to uh, provide right now too much information. Uh, but here you can manage your whole uh, database, right? Um, the second component that we have here is um, authentication. So basically um, we can um, configure per our application uh, how we want to authenticate our users. And we can just enable the email sign up that's pretty st straightforward. Somebody uh, have to give us emails, somebody have to provide uh, the password, uh, and then everything happens on the Superbase um, side. So this, this is super convenient because um, developing own authentication uh, from scratch on your own is complicated, right? You have to deal with the emails. You have to um, generate um, some, some templates, uh, send them. Uh, then you have to validate um, some situations like, OK, this email was already used. Um, you have to generate the error status. Uh, if you want to provide the email confirmations, you also have to generate the token. So this is a lot of work. and. Um, 
Superbase simplifies that. So, so you, you, you can just uh, you add, it, add this to your um, application and just use their SDK. Uh, I will show you in the minute how this works in details. And of course, uh, in the authentication, we have some external OAuth providers. So there's no problem if you want to enable the Facebook or Discord, um, Discord login, then you just to have to get the client ID or Discord secret. Uh, from from your uh, account, from your developer account uh, on the Discord. The same goes with other things like Facebook or GitHub. Uh, you, you you just to have to specify your credential here, and then uh, you can start using um, the, the the authentication from the external providers without any any um, problems. Um, then you all you also have have here some history some audit trail so so whenever uh, something happens in your system like somebody logins or somebody confirms the email like like i did today uh, before this live stream then then you already then you have the the audit trail of this every of every operation that happens here in the authentication and this is also useful because uh, if you don't use system like superbase you have to develop everything uh, on your own but here you have um, some stuff uh, built uh, in uh, then we have also the storage and the storage is this concept that we can create buckets you can create the public buckets so for instance the user can um, upload um, the avatars or you can uh, provide some uh, private um, buckets in which you can hold some files uploaded by your application and of course you can control access to these files and we will get into that um, in, in the minute. Uh, as I told you, um, this um, database behind the scenes use the Postgres. So you, you have here also possibility to just use regular SQL. So whenever you want to create a table, add column, uh, or I don't know, um, perform some, some SQL um, inserts, uh, and you prefer to not use SDK or not use um, the UI for that, there's no problem because you have access to this database and you can use um, just regular regular SQL scripts uh, without any problems. So, so this is super, super uh, flexible. Um, and okay. Um, here what we have in the database uh, yeah he, here you can also do the the backups and so yeah in the free, <laughs> free plan does not include project backups uh, however if you upgrade to pro uh, then you have access to that o of course you can always do the project backup on your own because as I said, you, you have just the access to the Postgres and you can use the PG dump or any other tools uh, that are working already for you. Um, here we have also some information about our database, how to connect to this database um, from some other systems. Um, then uh, we have also um, the triggers and the functions. Um, so for instance, I already tested the triggers a bit. Uh, I will show you that, for instance, uh, if somebody um, registers in this app, uh, I'm uh, also invoking this code. So we are able to extend uh, the, the schema of our database uh, in the way that we can perform some operations um, as a reaction to something that happens in the database. So for instance, if somebody created a user, then we can trigger some SQL or some operation on the database. So it's also another thing that uh, it's cool and, and uh, makes the whole solution uh, really um, flexible. And here, if you go to the API section, uh, then you have uh, the explanation how you actually can get access to your Superbase instance, right? Because of course, this is super cool that we have this user interface, but always we want to use um, this data outside in some applications, in some backend applications, in, in mobile applications, in uh, web apps. Uh, whenever we want to, to access um, the data from, from our Superbase, uh, it's very convenient to use uh, the SDK for that. And they are generating, first of all, um, the API 
URL. So whenever you create um, your Superbase project, you would have the API URL that you can actually use um, for uh, for the establishing the, um, the connection. So let's say um, you are the JavaScript developer like, like me. Uh, you can install just the package uh, from NPM. It's called um, Superbase uh, slash Superbase JS. And then all you have to do is just import um, the create client um, function. And then the create client function can create for you uh, the instance of the Superbase uh, client. And uh, here it, it's a nice concept um, in this, um, uh, in, in this um, SDK that, that we have um, the anonymous key because whenever we can whenever we want to fetch the public information we are doing that as an anonymous user we are not logged in uh, but we can access some public data uh, so here to this create client thing we are just submitting the superbase url and the superbase key which can be actually um, the key for the anonymous uh, user and you can get your keys from uh, api so, so here you have the project API keys and you have uh, the anonymous uh, key that we will use in the minute. And you also have the, speci the special secret um, key that can do anything in the system, right? So um, this is super um, convenient if you have some backend, for instance, in the next JS, and you want to have uh, access to all the data as a super user, then you can just use um, the secret for that. So let's try maybe um, to connect uh, anonymously um, to uh, these uh, tables and let's try to get information about the ebooks, right? So here we have um, the, the table, which is called ebook, and let's, let's try um, to do it, right? So for, for that, we will go uh, here to, to the documentation. I already installed um, the Superbase JS, um, so I will just go to the console right now and I, I, I will just uh, use um, this anonymous key and we'll try to, to connect. So first of all, I will just, um, ins I will create the instance of, um, so maybe let's do it create client and we of course require uh, so we'll uh, just um, create the instance of the um, super base um, and this would be let super base create client and here we have to just provide the information uh, from here so first of all we're gonna have the super base uh, URL uh, oh, okay. So maybe I will write it down and I will just copy it uh, to, to the console. So first of all, we're gonna uh, create the super base. Mm. First of all, we will just require the client. And here's the URL of our instance. And then we have also to get uh, the anonymous key. Because first of all, we're going to try uh, to use um, uh, the, the anonymous key. Mm, I will copy it. OK. And now let's try to use it. Okay, so we have the instance of uh, our super base. I hope you can see everything. Uh, so here you can see the instance that we have the super super base client. We have the super base URL, the key. There is also the real time URL. So okay, we can start using um, that uh, that code. So first of all, we're going to try to get something out of the database. And let's go, um, for instance, here to the API. And if we go here, 
um, what, that's the really nice thing of the Superbase that it already uh, recognizes what kind of tables you have. And here, if you go uh, to the API, you already have kind of a documentation of your code. So for instance, here is uh, shown how you can select the ID from uh, the Superbase, right? So basically it awaits the Superbase uh, and and then uh, you can select all the IDs uh, from the table um, ebook. Um, here you can, of course, select some other attributes. Um, you can, of course, read all the rows. There's no problem with that. Then you are just writing the select um, and, and you can mark that you want to get all the data. Um, of course, you can do the filtering. So for instance, if you want to search for a certain column that it has some value, there's no problem with that. You can also insert some uh, data. So we're gonna try it. Um, so maybe first of all, uh, let's try to uh, get all the data from uh, the ebook um, table. So let's do it. Mm, first of all, I will write it here because it's not very easy to uh, to change the code uh, inside the console. Uh, maybe I will save it as uh, uh, JS files. False JS. Okay, so we're gonna have here uh, some um, highlight. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna um, fetch um, use await uh, superbase from ebook uh, select. Let's select all, and we're not gonna use um, the um, await inside the console, uh, but we will just use the regular uh, promises. So here I will just specify the data, and then we can do then. Um, response and for instance uh, data equals um, to response right so this this would be uh, just the promise and let's try um, to use uh, that um, that command here let's see uh, what will happen and here is the pending and if we access um, the data you can see uh, that it's empty right so we have uh, the um, we have uh, the connection but the status is uh, 200 and we have no data uh, in return um, so this is actually the good thing um, and I will explain you why so whenever we have uh, the ebook um, table and you can see that we have here some ebooks so why there is no ebooks here um, and here, uh, I will just explain you uh, quickly the concept of uh, policies. Because right now, uh, if we go um, to the, uh, where is it? where was it actually? So it's ebook, no, database, roles. Maybe it was on the authentication policies. Yeah. So uh, when I created the ebook um, column, uh, I marked it that it has the row, a low security level. And that means that by default, nobody can access the data inside the ebook um, table. And right now you can see that I'm anonymous user because I've used the anonymous key. And by default, Superbase is not uh, returning me any data. And I highly recommend you to always start with uh, the low security. Uh, so uh, whenever you create the new table, it should be by default not accessible by anonymous people. Because this obviously, uh, whenever you want to offer some data that anybody can access it, you have to be really sure that you are not exposing any secrets or you are not overexposing the data from your database. So right now, let's say we know that, okay, the ebook is safe to be released uh, publicly. So we're gonna create a new policy. And here we can, um, 
here we can, okay. I will just enlarge it that way. And here we have uh, two possibilities. Uh, one is to use the cr a policy from a template. So we can um, select some predefined templates and that's also super convenient because we have already most of the um, important uh, options, right? So we have enable read access to everyone, enable insert access only for authenticated users, enable update access for users based on their email, right? So we have some predefined policies here. Um, and uh, for instance, let's say that we want to enable read access to everybody. And now you can see that we have the template and the template is called create policy name on public ebook for select using true, right? So there is no check. Um, if, if we want to um, do some authorization, so for instance, if the user is authenticated, uh, then we can add another policy. So as you can see, uh, we can quickly start um, just by using the templates. Of course, if you need to do something more complex, something more um, uh, complicated, some, some additional checks, there's no problem with that. You can prepare your policies on your own. However, right now we will just keep uh, things simple and I will use uh, the public uh, policy. Um, so we just enable access, uh, read access to everybody. So, uh, here for the select, uh, of course, I want to use just return true, right? So uh, I will create this policy, enable access, uh, enable, well, enable access. Okay, uh, I will not edit this and I will just save the policy now. So right now you see uh, that we have the ebook uh, column which has the new policy, right? And let's get back to our console and let's try to actually do the same. So I will just um, do the super base select. And here uh, right now I will just check what we have in the um, data. So inside the data, we actually have the array in which we have our eBooks. And there's no problem that we can uh, do um, this um, we can launch this code uh, inside uh, our, for instance, uh, Next.js application, right? So if we want to list all the eBooks, we can just uh, use uh, that client, fetch these eBooks, and of course, return it to our uh, Next.js application. However, let's maybe, um, before we jump in into the next JS thing, um, maybe let's uh, try to secure that the ebooks can be accessed only by um, logged in users. Uh, because I think that's also interesting. And that's, that's uh, I think, quite common situation in, in, in many systems that you want to restrict access to some data only to authenticated users. So we'll go back here. Uh, and we're going to delete uh, this uh, policy that we just did. Um, I will delete it. And we're going to cre create a new policy from the template. And here we're going to have enable, uh, enable insert access for authenticated users only, enable update access uh, for, um, so maybe, OK. So for all authenticated. Uh, how we can actually copy it. Mm. Okay, so maybe I will copy uh, this one. Okay, use this template. And here we will take it and review. Let's review that policy. Select for authenticated users only. Okay, we're gonna save this policy. 
and enable select for authenticated users only. So let's try again to actually fetch the data. Now again, we have the situation that the data is empty, right? Uh, and the data is empty because we are using the anonymous key and we have to log in to this um, API to basically have access to the ebooks. So let's try to do it. And again, we can go to the API, we can go to the authentication, and here you have the information about how you can authenticate actually uh, in your application. So um, you can use the client API keys, and this is this anonymous key. Um, you have um, the service keys that you can use, or you can uh, just uh, log in as a user. So uh, in order to do that, um, we're gonna go to user management. And here you have, again, some explanations how to use the authentication layer from the Superbase. And this works very similarly to what we just use about uh, the database, but we are just using the auth module. And uh, we can just use the sign up to create new user. There is no problem with that. Or we can just uh, try to log in as a uh, as a new uh, as an already existing user so first of all uh, i will log in as a like already existing user i will maybe copy it here so again we're gonna have um the super base here i will submit my um my email my simple password that I used. And of course, here we again would use as the promise and user is response. I will just specify the user. And let's try this code. Maybe just let's do it as a wine liner, just to be sure that our console works fine. And you can see that we have right now the session for this user. So basically, we have here a lot of information about the user. Uh, we have the access token. We have the information when this token expires. Um, we have the email address. We have the role, whether this user was authenticated or not. We have the user metadata and, and so on. Um, this is the regular JSON web token, and this is also really great and uh, and um, flexible um, in in the super base uh, that you also can use um, this JSON web token. Uh, you can just create it on your own if you want. Um, there's no problem with that. So, for instance, if I would copy that to JSON web token IO, we can see what's there inside. So encode it. And as you can see, it's a basic JSON web token that holds some information about the user um, from the super base. This is the ID of the user. This is the email. And of course, we can extend it with some other information. We can um, change the role. We can add the user meta metadata. There's no problem uh, with that. But coming back again, to our console, um, to our console, uh, let's try to, for instance, uh, fetch the ebooks again because right now we are logged in. And if we go to data, you can now see that this data is working again. And so you know right now how to use Superbase to fetch the public information. You know how to use Superbase to restrict some database that you can only get um, the, the records if you are logged in. However, right now, let's try to do it uh, that we can fetch only ebooks 
that are belonging to me. So here we have the database and here we have the ebooks and here we have the users. So I'm the user, I'm this guy, right? It's four, three something. And I'm also logged in right now as uh, this person, because if I would write superbase of user, you can see that I'm this person, right? So let's try to extend um, the the ebook table in the way that I will add here information about who is the owner of the certain ebook. So let's say we're gonna create the new column, and the new column would be named owner. Okay, let's name it owner. Uh, the type would be uh, okay. Maybe I will make it smaller user defined so here we have some uh, I cannot create oh, add the foreign key relation select the table to reference to and it would be users select a column from users to reference to um, ID and the following foreign key relation will be added so owner would basically point to the user's ID. So it would be safe. And right now we have two ebooks and I will assign one of these ebooks to this guy. So uh, I'm not able to copy the cell content and owner I will be the owner of the Superbase ebook. Uh, okay. So right now you can see that we have one record in the ebook table that is actually um, owned by the user, right? So we're gonna change the policy in the way that I would be able to just fetch the ebooks that are owned by me. Uh, so to do that, we have to go again to the policies uh, and we have enable select for authenticated users only. It's no longer, um, it's no longer uh, needed and we will change this policy to new policy. We're gonna take the policy enable insert access for authenticated. So uh, at using this template and enable Yeah, so actually, yeah. so actually, I, I took the wrong template, right? So of course, we don't want to check um, the whether the user is logged in because we did this previously. Right now, we just need to check the UID, right? So um, this would be a bit different, but we're gonna use this template, and uh, we'll use it for select. So from delete, we're gonna delete it. And here we just have the requirement that auf, which is the special variable that holds information about um, the context of currently logged in user. Uh, so in, in, in that context, we are superbase.auf.user and the ID would be this, right? And we are just making sure that it's equal to the user ID um and here actually it's in our case owner right so alpha id has to be equal to the owner so let's save that um policy and we had to rename it to owner because in our table um the the column is called owner right of course we could name it user un underscore id there's no problem with that, right? But in that case, it's just named owner. So that's why I had to change this policy um, in the way. Uh, so let's go back to our uh, console and let's try 
to actually fetch the information uh, about the ebooks. So I will just start ebooks. And right now you can see that uh, in return we are getting um, just uh, one ju just one ebook because here we have the policy that always is making sure uh, that we can access only the information um, that policy allows us. So there's no way um, to fetch or update any other ebook and we can just specify that okay this specific ebook is owned by this id and then we are able to to fetch it or update it of course if the policy allows it. okay so you are you you know right now how you easy you can access the ebooks and how easy uh, you can uh, sign in with the user and um, then perform some um, some operations. So let's say you want to register the new user, right? Because I just sign in as, as as this email. But let's say we want to register and use a new user. So it's also really simple. Um, and this I will show you from the next JS. Uh, application uh, I created for you um, a very simple um, Node.js application and here I will show you um, how you can use uh, use it uh, the super base uh, from your code um, so I just created um, the super base um, client so I just created the utils folder and then I put here some uh, super base URL super base anonymous key uh, of course it's a good way to hold uh, this URL or the key as an um, environment variable of course I mark this uh, environment variables as the public ones uh, because obviously um, the URL and the anonymous key can go to the front end without any problems um, and then, and then I have just the page which I named register, and here we have the very simple um, component, and that component has the basic UI with the email input, and also the password input, and if somebody uh, clicks registers, then we are calling the superbase. And here we are calling the superbase auf module again, and we have the function sign up. And in this uh, function, um, we are just providing two attributes. One is the email and the password. And of course, uh, whenever we have some error, uh, we are able to intercept that and just show it to our user. So I will just make sure that I have the server back in, uh, running in the background and let's try the application so it's super base register okay so the ui is not perfect i know uh, but it's not the point of <laughs> of today's live uh, live stream uh, of course if you have some questions about the super base uh, feel free to just um, ask them on the chat uh, chat today is really <laughs> Uh, silent I would say but okay maybe uh, you don't have any questions uh, that's also fine uh, but in case you have any uh, just leave them there uh, okay so here is the application and let's say I would try to register as the person that already exists um, in the system So thanks for registering. Now check your email to complete the process. So in the background, actually, here there was sent the request to the to our Superbase instance, right? And we received error because there is already registered account right like that 
I'm not sure why the the <laughs> the uh, Superbase returned that error. I would actually expect to receive the error that the user is already taken or something like that. But okay. Um, but let's try maybe to um, just register with other account. And in Gmail, for instance, you can just use plus. And for instance, you can write here 002. And that would be the different email, but uh, it will go to the same mailbox. So if I click the register now, we should get the other uh, status back. And here we have another ID created, right? So we have the new ID. We can, of course, go um, to the users table. And you right now see that we have another um, ID. Um, I will check if I received actually the email back from the Superbase after the registration. Let me quickly check my mailbox because maybe there is something there. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, there is something. So I will show it to you. So as you can see, we received the email, right? It's it's not super. It's not super uh, great, right? It, but I, I think uh, you can customize all that uh, inside the um, Superbase. But just for your information, that we created this uh, this new email, uh, this new account, and it's all handled by Superbase. You can confirm your mail. Uh, you can click on confirming. Uh, this would redirect you to your application. Of course, you can intercept the access token and perform the login in the back. So it's very flexible. But just for your information, Superbase is also uh, it's also possible um, to use um, the the Superbase mailing functionalities, and you can customize them inside uh, the settings uh, of your project. And I think I received the first question from Christian. Thanks, Christian, uh, for first question. Uh, so uh, this is it better than Prisma? Uh, I, I think the Superbase actually is completely different solution uh, because um, Prisma is more like uh, the ORM um, library. So you just have the simple uh, building block, which is uh, the functions um, uh, that allow you to communicate with your database. But Prisma is just in library. It's not giving you the infrastructure. It's not giving you the way to upload the files. It's not giving you um, the control of uh, roles, of accessing the files, of accessing um, the certain tables in the database only in the concept, uh, only in the context of authenticated users. So Prisma is way more uh, lower level tool than actually Superbase. Because imagine that if you just want to use Superbase, uh, of course you have database, but behind the scenes, this database has to be um, deployed somewhere, deployed on the on the server, right? And Superbase provides you that. They also giving you uh, the bunch of tools like the JavaScript uh, client that you can use. Of course, um, there is also interesting concept uh, in the Superbase that if you are willing to not use the JavaScript client for some reasons, there is also no problem with that because you can just use the regular REST API um, to get uh, your data. So, so this is also possible. Um, you have to just check this in the docs. Um, here is, of course, um, the, the explanation how to use JS SDK, but there's no problem to just access all this data uh, as the REST API without using their um, special library. So it's I, I would not say it's better or worse. Uh, I think there are completely different tools uh, and they are solving different problems, basically. Of course, if you have some other questions, uh, feel free to pose them anytime. So 
Okay, coming back to our next JS application. Um, now uh, we can go to the, let's say, login uh, page. And on the login page, uh, we have, let's say, um, again, the very simple uh, component, uh, but this time we are not registering. Instead of we are getting the email, we are getting the password, and we are passing it to Superbase just to log in our user. And um, let's try this. Let's let's see what will happen. Actually, nothing interesting, right? Here would be just the console log, but it's just to give you an example how easy um, it is to actually use the super base. Here I also have the use effect, which checks on the um, client side uh, whether the user um, is logged in, and also we are just console logging it. Uh, console logging it. However, you can store the user in your context API. You can store it inside Redux or Mobix or any state manager. There's no problem with that. Of course, you can just keep it as a regular use state um, variable um, in your component. There's no problem with that. But OK, let's, let's try to just uh, log in as this user. So um, let's see if something will happen. And if I click login, you can see that, again, I'm getting in return the session and the user, and I'm authenticated. And the next thing I will show you um, is how easy we can actually um, change the data in the database in the, concept, in the context of the user and how easily we can upload the files, because this is, I think, quite useful. And then we will go to the new, new page. Um, it's slash profile. And here, as you can see, we have the information about my profile, right? So I'm logged in as the user. Let's see how the code looks. So uh, we're not going to need other stuff. Um, so first of all, we are fetching the user and just storing the current user in the use state. Super simple, nothing fancy, right? Uh, the component mounts, we are fetching the user. Um, the user we are taking from the super base and we are storing the details uh, inside uh, our state. And of course, uh, you might already know that we had to specify the policies on the uh, user's um, account, on the user's table, sorry. Uh, that user can view only own data and they can only update own data. Because obviously, if we have the table users, um, I don't want the user Arthur C, uh, which is this user, um, to upload the full name or the avatar URL of any other user. This is not something uh, I, I would allow, right? This person can only update. Uh, own um, own data. Okay, I see a new question. Uh, this is quite <laughs> frequent questions while I'm streaming. Whether the recording will be available later? Uh, the answer is as always. Um, if nothing bad happens with the stream, uh, the stream will stay on the channel. So. Assuming that no uh, book will fall down and hit me in the face and I will start bleeding, uh, I think uh, the recording will stay. Uh, so yeah, coming back to the users. Mm, I have the R2C and of course this guy can only update his attributes. So that's why we had to specify the policy like that. And let's try to actually update the full name as this user from our Next.js application. So here you can see um, that whenever we are handling the submit, so we have the update profile, right? Um, so then we are handling the submit. I'm getting the data from the form, and then I'm passing information to the database that I would like to update the full name with the staff from the form, right? So, and then of course I have to specify which uh, ID I would like to um, update. And here I'm taking the, my own ID of the currently logged in user. 
So let's see if this works. New R2 C, update profile. Uh, of course, the UI is uh, not reacting to these changes. We should rather uh, show here some of the success um, message. Um, however, I think it should work. And just to confirm that, uh, let's go here and let's refresh the data. And you can see that the full name is here. And right now it comes from um, the, the profile, right? So you can see that very easy, we can uh, update the data, insert them into the database. And by the way, let's try to hug this application a bit. So we have here um, the Superbase update full name. And let's try to update full name of other ID. So basically, we should just take maybe this ID. Um, I will copy it. And here I will just comment this out. And I will copy it, uh, right? So it should work. Uh, actually, it shouldn't work, <laughs> but uh, I just meant that, OK, uh, the, the syntax should work. Uh, so let's try to update uh, the user with this ID. I will, of course, save the file. And let's let's check it. So uh, I will go here. And we have the new R2C. I will just clear the database, uh, the, the network table. And if I click the update profile, now you can see that we have 404 error because we are not able actually to update this user. So if I would refresh that, you obviously don't see any changes in the database. So again, this is thanks to the policy that is making sure that we are able to just insert the data on the specific records that we know that are owned by our current uh, user. So let's save it. And right now, I will also show you how easily um, it is possible um, to, um, to upload the avatar. Because if we are the user, it's super cool that we can have the feature that actually lets us upload the avatar. And this avatar is uploaded to the cloud and kept in the cloud. So we have the storage. And here we have the buckets. And here we have the public bucket, which is called um, avatars. And here, every user can have the own directory, the own folder, uh, which is actually named after the ID of this user. So this this user can upload some uh, stuff um, to the avatars uh, bucket. And of course, buckets, the same way as the databases uh, in the Superbase, they also have um, the concept of policies. So if we go to the policies, um, we can see, you can see here that we have the access for inserting, updating, and deleting. Uh, so there is no problem with uh, inserting the new avatars um, for the users. So if we see the edit, you can see that, first of all, we are checking the UID. So it's not working for anonymous users. And we are also making sure that the user actually wants to upload the avatar in the folder that is named uh, like the UID of this user. So this is um, this is the policy that checks that. Uh, the same goes for updating. So we are just making sure that user updates the objects from the certain folder. Uh, the same uh, is with uh, deletion. So if you have some questions about policies, how to use them, if something is not clear to you or you, you are not sure whether you understand how a Superbase is useful, why anybody would need to use the Superbase, um, feel free to ask um, such questions uh, anytime. I think I, I will close the stream uh, in about 15 minutes or so, but I will just uh, show you right now how you can upload things um, to the buckets. So 
coming back to our application, we have the handle function, uh, handle update fun function, that this time uh, is actually getting the file. So we have the input here and we have the input um, called, where is this input? update profile yeah we have the input type file called avatar and then we have upload avatar uh, button and if we click it um, we are submitting this form and this goes um, the, the data from from this form goes to the handle upload function so basically whenever somebody picks the file uh, like we do now um, because obviously we have to check this um, so let's say uh, I want to upload the cover from today's um, stream. So it would be Superbase Live. And I have the file here. And this file, of course, will go to the handle upload um, handler. And inside uh, of this, um, we are calling uh, the Superbase storage this time. So again, you see that we have the new model uh, from the Superbase that we can use. It's Previously, we used um, the storage, uh, the, sorry. <laughs> Previously, we used the authentication. Um, and uh, right now, uh, we are using the storage. Uh, and uh, the syntax is quite similar. Uh, we have the superbase.storage uh, from avatars. And there we have the function. Of course, you can find all this information inside the readme, inside the docs. And here we are uploading the file. And we have to specify uh, what directory we want to choose. Uh, and of course, um, if, if, if we choose um, the directory other than our ID, this would fail, right? So, so we have current user.id, uh, then we are naming the file exactly the same way as uploaded file. Of course, for some reasons, uh, in some applications, you might actually want to need, uh, you, you, you can need to change uh, the name of the file, uh, but in that context, we will just keep um, the name exactly the same. Um, then, of course, we are getting the file object. So it would be called avatar. And we can uh, just submit some information about the cache control or absurd. Um, absurd works in the way that if we have already the same file named like that, um, the upload function will basically uh, replace the file. Because if we would um, just comment out the absurd and this avatar file would exist before, um, then probably we would get some error. So, of course, we don't uh, want that in that context because sometimes the avatar file has exactly the same name, but it has some changes inside the content. And um, then in return, uh, once, once the upload is completed, we can uh, get the public URL of this, um, this specific file by by um, submitting by using the get public URL function and then we can just uh, use it uh, so uh, let's let's try to to, um, to test this I will upload the avatar uh, key of null okay so it's not working uh, for <laughs> for some reason. Uh, let's try to um, debug this. Why? Why actually it's not working? Um, Superbase. Uh, why? 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 Maybe we would have some information here. Uh, the new role violates role level security policy for table objects. So, whenever we have the error like that, probably something is wrong with the policies. Um, so let's make sure that. Um, that we can do um, so give users access to own folder this policy uh, looks okay um, insert new policy create policy uh, so give user access to folder only um, okay folder name assets use this template so 
Hmm. Actually, I'm not sure why the insert is not working. Um, let's maybe check it. So um, the bucket ID is avatars. Okay. Um, so it's avatars. We are uploading um, to the current user. Um, so maybe the current user is not there, right? Let's let's make sure <laughs> that this application has the context of the uh, user. So it should have it. Let's try it again. Super base dive. Okay. So obviously, uh, looks like something with the upload is not okay uh, for the table objects. Hmm. So we have the first problem uh, to actually track what is here. Uh, so handle upload key, avatar key, storage upload current user ID. Uh, uh, uh. So maybe let's see if this ID is proper. So storage object avatars. Yeah, this ID looks okay. And it's, let's see maybe what we have inside this bucket again, all buckets. So we just have the old data here that I uploaded some times ago, um, but looks like insert edit bucket ID avatars and the UID text means storage folder name that's weird um, avatars avatar update control <laughs> hmm storage policy give users access to only their own top level named as UID uh, create create object okay bucket ID it looks like uh, the same but save policy okay so what's the difference here uh, this looks the same like that one I'm not sure maybe let's remove the insert stuff and just make sure that it's Maybe they change something. I don't know. Let's let's try it from scratch. So we have um, the give users access only to their own top level folder folder named as UID. Mm. Yeah, and we want that for insert. Save policy, policy saved, and let's try it again. <laughs> Hopefully, it will work this time because I have no clue why uh, there is a problem with that. Uh, upload avatar. 
yeah again again there is something wrong uh the super base so let's see if the update profile actually works yeah so updating works um something is wrong with um the uploading and i think this is because i'm streaming because <laughs> usually it happens that if you want to show something or if you are doing the demo this the things that used to work uh, are not working anymore and i'm not sure why uh, because the avatars yeah we have the storage we have the current user id and current user id um let's check these policies again insert review So maybe let's remove that insert again and let's try to do it. Um, create to only their own top level folder. UID. Okay bucket ID let's do it again for save policies ah okay there's already some policies uh, so again let's try to delete the others as well uh, delete that one delete delete and new policy again okay and let's allow them to do everything within their own directory and avatars okay so as you can see i'm trusting in my code because i'm just changing <laughs> stuff elsewhere uh and i'm just changing it there okay and now it worked so something was wrong with the policies i don't know maybe they updated something maybe they were in the wrong format but as you can see Mm, I have a new directory, which is the named uh, so so as you can see that it worked uh, and it uploaded the file inside this public um, inside this public avatars uh, bucket, right? So let's try again to do some hacking, right? So um, as you can see, I'm uploading file to my own uh, directory, right? Uh, but what actually would happen um, if we um, try to upload the avatar to the something different, right? So let's just uh, hard code here the other ID. Uh, so I will take this ID and this is obviously the directory of some other user right so i will try to upload the file there and we will see if the policy will work so coming back here i will choose another file um maybe superbase uh, vector and let's try to upload this and of course this time this is not working right um because because I was trying to upload the file um, to the directory. This it's not owned by me, and the policy uh, disallowed that. 
Um, okay, I, and I've, I think the last thing um, that we can do here um, is to upload the avatar and because right now we are just displaying this on the UI. It's nothing interesting actually, right? We are just uploading, storing in the bucket and then showing it here. But I think uh, last thing that we can do um, or maybe not last because I, I will also show you how you can listen to the new events uh, in the super base because I think this can also be cool and quite easy to achieve. Um, so we're gonna do it uh, as well. Um, but uh, so here we have the public URL after um, uploading the file. And let's also store that inside um, the database, right? Because we have the user and we can store the avatar user uh, on the table. So this can be also interesting because then on the UI, we can just uh, display that. So uh, avatar URL, and here we can specify avatar URL, and of course, use the public URL. Um, so here we have the separate call to the super base to actually get the public URL because whenever you upload the private files, you can generate um, the link that works only within five minutes. And this is great if you have stuff like, I don't know, ebook and somebody bought from you the ebook and you just want to let the user uh, download this ebook, right? So then you are obviously not generating the public URL because then the buyer can take the URL and uh, give it to everybody. But then you, you can just generate um, the URL that works for two minutes that just your buyer, just your customer can actually get the file. But in the public files, in the public buckets, usually you just want to have the public URL because as right now, we will keep this inside the user entity and we will store it under the avatar URL. So it's gonna be right that. And now let's try to re-upload um, the file again using our super testing user interface. And we're gonna choose uh, the vector thing. Uh, let's clear the network. And if we go to the database now and refresh that, you should see that we have here the URL to our avatar. And actually we can use it in our application or elsewhere. So you can see that it's really powerful that you have the authentication, you have the storage, you have the um, authorization level, so you can restrict access to certain functionalities only for the authenticated users. And this is a very, very common situation um, that you might have while developing web applications. And you can use just Superbase for that um, and you don't have to write everything on your own. And of course, I'm not saying that Superbase will, I don't know, replace uh, the whole market of custom applications, right? Because obviously there are still reasons when you want to develop something from scratch. However, I think for some quick experiments and some certain applications, you can just go with the Superbase and uh, just not implement functionalities like storage on your own because you can just use Superbase and the cloud servers for that. And last thing um, for today I, I want to show you is listening to the changes because I think this is also a really powerful concept of the Superbase that you can not only um, update um, the, the stuff uh, in the database, but instead you can create the user interface and you can actually listen to the changes that are happening inside the tables. And I think this is also powerful uh, because you can create uh, any kind of um, real-time applications like that. 
Uh, and of course, doing the real-time applications uh, on your own is again something challenging because you have to have your own uh, server, you have to secure the server, you have to uh, make sure that uh, all connections are accepted, uh, you have to pay for your hardware and stuff like that, right? But here in the Superbase, um, again, you have very simplified uh, way to, to do it. So. Uh, let's go to the super base and here we have the the docs about um, the real time thing so we can uh, just um, subscribe to all the changes that are happening inside the database of the superbase it was just me okay so how we can solve that go to the database section click on the replication in the sidebar okay so today we learned that you have to always uh, read the docs um before you um start complaining that that something is not working uh so yeah let's do it database replication replication there is nothing here. Okay, super base real time. Uh, super base real time. And what I have to do there actually click on which, okay, click on replication in the sidebar, control which database events are sent by toggling the insert update delete toggles, control which tables broadcast change it by clicking into the source and toggling the tables. Okay tables source ah okay yeah all tables okay um we have the listeners here or actually we have multiple <laughs> listeners now but uh let's 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 try it let's try it maybe, maybe this will work uh finally mm, so we gonna have here arthur again see save okay see guys now we are getting um, multiple uh, events because obviously we have multiple uh, listeners but I I was yeah I, I really wanted to show you that because I think that this listening to the changes thing is super super uh, flexible option because on the back end side you can just listen to the new stuff that is created in the database and you can react to this stuff so for instance if somebody updates the user uh, you can for instance listen to that change on your server and you can notify users like hey um, you just changed the attribute or you just changed the, the bank number so I, I think uh, this this is a great option, but we learned that first of all, you have to enable that. Uh, the second thing is that they are not recommending to doing that on the client. Uh, maybe let's just quickly check whether this would work. Just out of the curiosity. Um, so let's keep it as it is. And let's see if this works actually on the front end. Um, yeah, it's working. So, so they are uh, not recommending that. But obviously, let's see um, what happens if you are changing the other user. So we're gonna change the Arthur Tester, uh, saving that, and oh, I don't like that. <laughs> so it worked, uh, but I would expect actually that the policies are also working on um, the events so probably that's why they are not recommending to use that um, on the client because then you can get um, the updates about the users the other users basically right so that's that's weird i, I would expect that the policies work um, so my subscription works um, that, that I can use it only um, uh, that this will apply the policies and only change me the subscription about my user. But 
looks like um, it returns all the changes. So mm, just quick look um, in the database, replication, superbase, real time, uh, all tables, um, schema, public, enabled for all tables. Yeah, so maybe it's possible to actually change the policy that it just returns uh, create the policy for authenticated users. Yeah. Settings. Okay, it's not there. Yeah, so, so we have to be careful um, with these events because um, if it works on the back end, I think it's no problem, right? Because you can get all the updates about your system and probably nothing bad happens. However, if you have the subscription uh, enabled um, in your application on the front end, then I think um, this 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 is not cool um, to <laughs> to actually have that. Uh, because somebody can listen to um, to all the changes from the superbase, um, and this is obviously something we don't want to offer by default. So you have the overview of the superbase right now. Uh, I think you you know at least how you can um, create the data in the table, how you can use the authentication, how you can use the storage, how you can uh, upload the public files, and how you can manage the access. Um, I hope you learned something new. Um, if you have some questions about the Firebase, uh, not Firebase, but Superbase, uh, just let me know. Um, if uh, if you have some suggestions for upcoming streams, um, if you would like to code something with me, or you just have um, some some nice suggestion for next JS uh, live coding session, uh, then just let me know, and I, I will try to set up uh, something for you. So that's all for today. I wish you. Uh, good uh, day and see you on this channel thanks for your attention and take care guys